Apart from the hump, the actual meat is very, very lean. Wow. Grilled camel mishkak. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Muscat, Oman. Mustafa is coming to pick Ying and I up and we're gonna do a few more things around Muscat and then we're actually gonna take a quick day trip over to Nizwa, which is his hometown and it is one of the cultural capitals of Oman. Our flight is technically tomorrow, but it's at 1 a.m. So we'll be going to the airport later tonight. So we are actually packing up and we're gonna check out of her, our hotel now and then we're gonna leave our bag in Mustafa's car and then we'll go around all day long. We got all checked out of our hotel, met up with Mustafa, and we are driving now towards the opera house. We're not gonna go to an opera or a show, but we're gonna try to get a tour of the inside, and I think they, they are pretty formal. I did bring with me a collar shirt, so hopefully we can get in with the collar shirt. Oh, it's been a long time. <laughs> The actual structure of the Royal Opera House in Muscat is incredible and impressive. The architectural design and it is just impressively clean and even even just walking now along, this is a marble floor on the bottom, you can hear your, your shoes squeaking because it's so clean. My name is Salman. I'm gonna be your guide, uh, inshallah, in Royal Opera House. Uh, Royal Opera House was opened first time in 2011. Our tour guide has said that the roofing and all the wood is mahogany from Burma, and then all of the flooring and all of the marble is from Italy. To the auditorium. We use exotic system here. Uh, that means if you are an outside, you cannot hear anything from inside. Just if you touch here, you can feel the AC. Oh, oh yeah. 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 This is the main auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it really opens up into a huge auditorium. Oh, and even just speaking, I can hear my voice carry. So the acoustics in here must be incredible when there's a performance. Oh. So this is the main auditorium. The capacity of seats is about uh, 1,100 seats. In the small booths, it's just four, four oh, seats? Yeah. Four seats. Okay. The tour lasted just for about 15 minutes. Oh wow, it's really blazing hot once you come outside. Another good thing about taking the tour of the Opera House is that they crank the AC nice and cold in there. I don't think I'm really the opera going type of guy, but definitely after taking that tour and going on the inside, I would love to go to an opera here. From the Royal Opera House, we just took a quick drive over to the Grand Mosque. And it is just incredible, just Impressive the amount of marble and just the open spaces, the minarets. A couple of the main features. Number one is this unbelievable chandelier which I am walking underneath right now. And the whole dome. And then number two is the carpet. And in this entire prayer hall, it is just a single one carpet which was actually stitched within the prayer hall so that it fit perfectly and it's all just one entire gigantic carpet. driving on our way to Nizwa and this should take a little bit over an hour. We got some snacks including chips Oman, which is the famous potato chips in Oman. Oh, they're not just plain potato chips, they have like some some kind of chili seasoning on them. Oh yeah, they smell actually quite fantastic. Omani potato chips. Yeah, I think it is a, a chili seasoning. And then that 
that is your your typical potato chip. Always crispy and salty and addictive. We arrived to Nizwa. That was a good drive. And the first thing we're gonna do is go to the Nizwa Castle and Nizwa Souk. It's kind of like maybe people will give it as a gift yeah, people, and or buy for a special occasion. Special occasions. occasion weddings, so I want to eat. Um, At the back of this market, they have a very famous Omani dessert. The dessert is called helwa. The helwa and like and drink uh, coffee with it. Swallow it and flow it with the coffee. Okay. Omani, Omani coffee. This is the way to do. All right. So they have one tin opened here that you can sample. You grab a spoon and it is made of a combination of starch and sugar and nuts. And it kind of has a jellyish texture to it. Mm, kind of has a kind of has a spice fragrance to it. Oh, and I think they use a lot of rose water as well. There's a lot of rose water used as well, as well as ghee, which is the the fat. Oh, I'll eat the whole thing. Mmm. Oh, the nuts are really, really good in there. It is pretty sweet. It's like a sticky jelly. It's almost like a roasted, burnt taste to it. Maybe that comes from the sugar. A little bit of a spice tinge as well. And then you gotta follow that with coffee. Yeah, so the, the coffee is not sweet, but the the helwa is very sweet, and then you chase it with the coffee. We have just entered the Nizwa castle and fort. The castle dates back to the 9th century, and the fort is from the 17th century, so they added that on later. And uh, the walls of the fort are 34 meters in height and 45 meters in diameter. Hello. Hello. I'm climbing a flight of stairs and emerging onto the roof area. Oh yeah, now we have a nice view of the fort. Ying is waiting in the staircase, protected from the sun. So we are entering into the tall, rounded fortress. Walking up this staircase, there are all sorts of traps. And one of the interesting traps is this crack in the, in the wall right here, above me they would pour boiling date juice down the hole on the victims, on the people trying to get to the fort. So imagine I'll just be standing here and some hot flaming boiling syrup comes falling on your head. And then you also gotta be careful on the ground. They had some traps here where you'd fall into a hole. I had to switch hats real fast. This sun is some of the most intense sun I've ever felt. I'm gonna hike up the staircase now. One of the things that's amazing is that the fort is self-sustainable. So they have an internal well where they can get fresh water and then they can get all the supplies they need in here. And it's basically an entire mound of earth that is designed to protect from cannons and guns and all sorts of weapons. And it's, it really is an amazing fortress. It's, the walls are so thick. And there are some great views of Nizwa from here. And you can see the entire village, the old souk, the old areas of town the little oasis of date palm trees and the mountains in the background. We finished walking around the fort and we walked over to a restaurant called Bin Atik for lunch today. And it's a restaurant that some of you recommended me, so thank you all for the recommendation. Uh, but this is, this is their branch in Nizwa. They also have a couple branches in Muscat. And we just ordered a couple of different dishes Man, that sun will just drain you of your energy. 
I'm in need of some nourishment right now. The food has all arrived and we got a private room and we're eating Omani style on the ground and what they do is they have carpets in the room and then they put out a piece of plastic for any for any spillage. Okay, this is the first dish. What's the name of this dish? Thari. <laughs> Thari. It actually looks sort of like some kind of a mash, but it's those are pieces of bread which are like halfway pureed and then there's fish in it and then there's curry sauce. And you usually just use your these three fingers, grab a piece of the fish. Oh, that is hot. <laughs> and then mix it with the bread. Oh, that's really hot. Oh, that is really flaming hot. The bread just like absorbs the heat, so you gotta eat it fast. Oh. Mm. Oh, that is wonderful. That tastes like, that is like stuffing. It's like bread that's that's moist. It's fluffy and salty. You can taste a blend of curry spice in it. And then the fish, the fish is kind of a dry, slightly fishy tasting fish. So that complements the salty curry bread stuffing extremely well. You can tell that it's like bread that's that's mixed with curry and has just been cooked with curry so that it's sort of it's soggy, but in a very good way. This is a little bowl of ghee, which is fat, oil, and it's very common to pour some of it on your rice, especially white rice. I'll just add a little bit on this side. Okay, and then we got a piece of fried fish. I will break a little piece. I think it, is it kingfish? It is. I think it tastes like, it's like kingfish. I think the, maybe it's kingfish in the, that one too? Yeah. Okay, it's all kingfish. For the bread dish, you're supposed to just use your three fingers, but for this dish, you can go back to your whole kind of hand, and I'll try Omani style, which is where you take the rice into your the center of your palm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is like some really strong butter. Yeah, tastes like animal, more animal tasting butter, melted butter. It's makbus. 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 Okay. You know makbus? I cooked with the, with the maybe meat or chicken or fish. Okay. But it is cooked together. Yeah. So I will first take a, take off a piece of that meat and then go for rice. Yeah, you can tell that the rice has been cooked with the meat because the rice is just infused with a meaty flavor. And it doesn't have a strong taste, but you can definitely taste a little bit of spice, maybe a little bit of cumin in there, and maybe turmeric, um, but the spice is quite light. But then you, it really just kind of focuses on that meat flavor. For my next bite, I'll go in for some of the chutney. And then also some of the salad. I think this is a tomato-based chutney. Yeah. And there are little bones in this meat, so you gotta take it off the, you gotta take it off the bone. Oh, it's a little bone. But with the chutney, it's excellent though. That just complements it so well. It's like a tomato puree, but you can also taste a lot of garlic in there. That was some very much needed nourishment and energy and back out into the blazing sunshine. That food was really good. What I really liked, the bread dish with the fish was very interesting and very good but definitely the lamb and the rice with the, the tomato garlicky chutney was my favorite dish. We just took a drive for about 30 minutes and we are at an area called Al Khamara and this is this is a city, a town, more like a town, but then we came to the ancient old part of the town. There are narrow lanes with mud structures 
and we're gonna walk around here for a little bit. Oh. Uh. Is it close? You can see these walls are made of mud and some kind of grass as well. And then we've just stepped into a place where they have the irrigation canal running. So this is in the middle of the hot desert and there is flowing, very clear looking water. And it's flowing down there somewhere. Walking through this ancient village is amazing and it's so quiet and peaceful. And some of the homes here have been abandoned and they're deserted, but some of the homes are still in use. People live in them. This is incredible. It's like exploring a lost city and it's just completely quiet. We're the only ones here. Hello, Ying. drove up the mountain for a little ways, just up from the village we were, the oasis that we were in before. And this place is called Misfat al-Abri. And it is another small little village up on the side of the Rocky Mountain. There are also many farms, date trees. And so we're gonna walk around here. I'm already loving this little village and you can see just homes built onto the top of the rocks as well. And we are coming to the irrigation system and down to the farms. And immediately the temperature drops. It's fantastic. There's a cold breeze from the mountain and the trees and the water just provides a relief to the hot sun. In the middle of just barren, bone dry desert. And there, this is an, another amazing oasis. There are date trees, there are banana trees, there were mangoes up there, there's rushing water. This is incredible to see this oasis in the middle of the desert. I need my Thailand. Looks like we're back in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. The canal and irrigation system is really the lifeline, the blood vessel of this entire community. There is a stream of water which comes from a, a well in the mountain or from a rock in the mountain and then it's channeled through the entire village and through the date palm trees. And you can see the, I'm sitting on the ledge right now, the water is flowing. And then every, every now and then there is a little opening which is blocked right now. And when they want to get water down to the next level, down to the next terrace, they open up that channel of water and then it trickles down to the trees below. It kind of reminds me of the, the rice terraces in a number of different countries in Asia, except this is the Omani version of that. We drove back to Nizwa and there was no way I could leave Oman without one more dose of pre-dinner mishkak. Yeah. Pork kebab and kebab, camel, chicken, squid. Yeah. Maybe that's good. One one. These mishkak stands sort of set up in the parking lot of the fort. The fort is behind me, illuminated, and you can just smell the aroma of the grilling meat from across the parking lot. They had camel, so I had to get a skewer of camel, and then we also got a couple chicken and squid, and a kebab as well. And I'm just bathing in the smoke, enjoying it. They have a couple tables sitting out here in the parking lot. It's a wonderful atmosphere, environment. The, you can smell the meat grilling. And I just got a couple of skewers. When Mustafa told me they have camel, 
I had to get a skewer. This is my last night in Oman. This one on the top, I believe, is the camel. And I think that is a piece of the hump. And then this one is the kebab. There's some squid in here and some chicken. Oh man, and then he put he he put the spicy sauce all over it. I gotta start with the camel. How could I not? Wow. I am just amazed at how good camel is. It's incredible. And that is some awesome sauce too. That sauce is is tangy, a little bit spicy, and pretty salty, but that goes incredibly good with the, the smoky charred meat. I think one of the keys to making mishkak is that you gotta, you gotta cook it on a really hot flaming fire. The coals are white hot and then he fans the flames so it, it really gives it a smoky touch to it and that's delicious. Oh, camel skewer. And I should also mention that apart from the hump, the actual meat is very, very lean. Wow. Grilled camel mishkak. Next up for the kebab. Oh wow. Mmm. That tastes like meatloaf. Mmm. Has a little bit of a spongy texture to it. But then it's like, yeah, it's like a, a hamburger on stick. I gotta eat that piece of hump next. Oh, wow. You don't even need to chew. It just starts to turn to liquid as it touches your tongue. That is like the equivalent of Kobe beef or of like tuna belly. Oh, wow. Okay, I think I have a new favorite piece of meat. Okay, and then finally chicken skewers. Oh yeah, that's good as well but gotta give it up for that camel. I thought I was gonna say the drive through is really popular and now they're no more. <laughs> they all left. The drive the drive through here is especially popular. Many people just drive up, order some mishkak, get it through the window, and just sit in their cars in the comfort of the AC to devour skewers of mishkak. But I can't, I cannot trade this ambience sitting in on a, on a plastic chair in the parking lot. Omani street food mishkak was fantastic. We are now walking across the parking lot to go have dinner. Those are two of the most popular. At this restaurant, they have all the seafood up front on ice and you just choose the seafood you want. And I think they're gonna grill it all up for us. We're gonna take a seat and fresh grilled seafood coming up very soon. Final meal in Oman, and we got a variety of different seafood, a big plate of shrimp, some squid, and a fish. And they grilled it up. It smells smoky, and we are getting ready to dig in for dinner tonight. I'm gonna begin with these shrimp, and these are some jumbo ocean shrimp. Look at the size of this. Oh, few things make me happier than jumbo shrimp. And there's, you can see there's some kind of a spice blend on it, maybe some garlic, and I might just squeeze it with a little bit of lime first. Or lemon, actually, this is lemon. And then I gotta peel. Is it okay to use both fingers? Okay, it's hard to. Oh, okay, I will. I will pull off the head and set that aside for later. We also got a couple of Mediterranean Levantine dishes. This one is mutabal and also some hummus. And one of the common ways to eat seafood, especially shrimp, is to dip it in the mutabal. Oh, that's almost like, I think that will be kind of like tartar sauce. Mutabal is a, a roasted eggplant dip. Oh yeah. I am so happy eating shrimp. These are really, really firm, and that, that mutabal makes it, it's almost like a tartar sauce, but like a smoky, creamy eggplant dip. Oh yeah. Mm. I'll take this out, whoa, that is a, that is like a, a giant tortilla-like bread. I'm gonna actually set this down, gotta go for a little bit of lemon. Squeeze some lemon on there. Bread and fish. 
and salad. Add a little bit of salad and then mutabal and dip. Mm. Yeah, that fish is definitely char grilled. It has a, a smoky burnt flavor to it and then just a really meaty fish. I really like it with that mutaba. And I'm gonna squeeze lemon. All over this squid and then going for a couple a couple nuggets. And should I dip as well? Yeah. And I'm going hummus this time. Oh, wow. That squid is like creamy soft. Mmm. Or did I get the egg? I think I might have gotten squid egg. Because it's almost like creamy soft. I recommend you go pure, yeah. Oh, go pure? Yeah, go pure. Okay. Yeah. Some lemon. Okay. And Mustafa is recommending I go for some of the, the belly of the fish. Go for a little bit of lemon. Oh, yeah. Fish belly is a wonderful thing. Oh, the fat. And there are some bones in there. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the seasoning is quite simple, but it's all about that grill flavor and the lemon that accompanies it so well. We finished dinner with Mustafa. That was some good seafood. And now we have jumped into a taxi. It's about 9.30 p.m. and we are on our way to the airport. That was about an hour and 15 minutes drive. We made it to the airport. This is it for our trip to Oman. We were only in Oman for two full days, but it seemed like we were here for an entire week because we did so much in the two days. I wanna say a special thank you to Mustafa for taking us around. Without him, we definitely couldn't have done what we did, so thank you very much, Mustafa. It's about 11.30 p.m. now. Our flight leaves. We're flying on Turkish Air to Istanbul. Our flight leaves at 1.20 a.m. I am thrilled to be going to Istanbul and I am going to include everything on tomorrow's video. So I'm gonna end today's video now. Thank you all for watching. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you on the next video. Stay tuned tomorrow, in an hour from now, but it's tomorrow, we are going to Istanbul.